time that's the kind of god he is he is an on-time god if you don't know it you better recognize up in here ask about, about the sky we serve all the time hey y'all it's friday it's friday and we are no, here no we are here with our location but we are always patient hot dog and we be Right. I need y'all to check in and let me know, can you hear something? What's going on, folks? Can you hear? Can you hear us? Where y'all at? What's happening tonight? I know it's a lot happening. Let's let's check in with the good people. Yes. Where we at, folks? Where we at? Where we at? Where we at, folks? So, um, if we if we kind of just jump on into what tonight is going to be about, um, we finished Ephesians. Hip hip hooray! Yep, that's dope. Ephesians is done. Three months later. Done. <laughs> uh, oh, you found it. Six chapters in three oh. months. Uh, but it was really good. That was a good time had by all, hopefully, not just you and I. Um, but if we go into what what tonight is all about. So tonight is all about navigating the gray. It may go beyond tonight. Who knows? That's this seems like we gotta talk about this for a little for a little while, because if anybody is like me, then it's a whole lot of gray in their life sometimes. Uh, and so we're going to talk about what navigating the gray looks like, what it feels like um, in this moment. And I know as this ministry evolves and as you and I evolve, it's going to turn into an, a, another conversation of what we used to do versus what we do now. Uh, when we get into this space and we're navigating. And so I look forward to seeing how this evolves even beyond this conversation. That even today, right, what we used to do, right, what we do now. Oh, yeah. We're, like, you know, versus this level, right? Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's, let's really uh, get into this thing. And if, if I don't know if it's just me, but it's you're going in and out on my side. Am I strong signal though? But it's like going in and out, so it could just be me. Let me see here. Let me fool around with a few things. Uh, uh, let me try. How's that? Is that better? Is that better? It is better. You definitely sound closer. Uh, um, hi, good, good, good. Okay. Yeah, that's better. A little delay, but it's good. I can handle that as long as I can hear. <laughs> there we go. All right, Steph, so praise in. Let's jump in. Let's talk. Let's talk it out. Let's talk it out. Father, we come before you right now, Father God. Thank you, Lord. Whew. Thank you, God, for another day, Father God, for your grace and mercy. Mercy, Father God, claiming the victory, God, for every obstacle and every hurdle, Father God, standing on knowing the strength that a solid foundation can give us, Father God. We just want to say thank you, Lord. Thank you for every obstacle, Lord Jesus. Thank you for everything that you have done in our life, Father God. I thank you, Lord Jesus, that we may be vessels, Father God, unto your people, Lord, that the word that you have overflow unto somebody that needs a word tonight, Father God. Lord Jesus, we thank you for the end, Lord Jesus. We thank you for everything that you have done to shape God and mold us, Father God. We, Father God, we thank you for the apprehension and the fear, Father, that it continues to shape us to continue, Jesus. Father, as we get ready to launch into this word tonight, Father, Lord, that 
you just move us out of the way, Father. God, just remove our presence from this space and fill us with your Holy Spirit, Father. God, that every word that we say, Lord Jesus, this may be the one to us, Father God. That it be your word for someone, Father. We thank God and we ask this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. And here we are ready amen. to jump here into navigating the we... gray. Let's go. Uh oh, did we lose? So I, I tuned out just to see for a second if I could hear us uh, clearly, if it's just me. I know Sister Secretary is on and watching now, so she'll keep us in check in the chat. So, so that's good to know. Um, but okay. here we are, navigating the gray. So uh, life be life in, right? To say the least. Life be life in. Things happen. You get on a path, and then all of a sudden there is trial, there's tribulation, there's turbulence, there's all of these different things that come to try and detour you from the path that you have chosen um typically when you choose a path that is for your good that's when detours take place rather than when you're you know walking along a path of, of shenaniganery and foolishness then everything is in theory a detour but you don't recognize it as such because you're having a good time on the way um but when you are intentional about your walk your talk your life I think that you begin to kind of notice the gray a little bit more. It's, it's a little more apparent to you. It's, it's, uh, you're, you're more cognizant of what's taking place around you. This is Lindsay's opinion, right? This isn't Bible. This is Lindsay. Let me be clear, everybody. Um, but I have found that in the times of my life where I was not intentionally going after who God called me to be, yes, I was in gray, but I didn't realize I was in gray because I was having a good time. Right. I just kind of was doing what I wanted to do in the moment without thinking of the consequence, the repercussion, the, in any of it. I just did me, whatever that looked like, whatever that felt like. Um, and now that I have decided and I have stuck with my decision to walk into who God has called me to be and who he's asking me to be, it seems like I'm experiencing a lot more gray than normal. Mm. And... Um, it is so difficult. It can be so very difficult to figure out when you're transitioning from doing things your way to doing things God's way, what to do when you meet Greg. How do you navigate through that space? Do you do what you used to do? Like, you know, prior when I used to meet Greg, it would be me and, and whatever substance that I wanted to use to get me out of Greg to black where I don't see nothing, I don't feel nothing, I'm just in the black. You know, I may may have a, a drink of six just to get to the black, right? I may just go ahead and ignore and tune out and check out of life to get to the black where I see nothing and nothing really matters so that I don't have to deal with what I feel when I get into the gray. But since I have decided that I want to be who God has called me to be, in the gray space, I have found myself feeling a lot more i can't go to black i gotta stay in gray as much as you want to get to that bright white happy light i gotta stay in gray until i process what's taking place in the gray what does that look like for you now what did it look like for you then and what does that look like for you now going from getting getting through and, and experiencing your your gray spaces define what your gray space is and then what did it look like then and then now uh, okay so um a couple of things just say i'm in the gray right right now right mm -hmm. like space right, right now um for me, it looks a little di different. Like, I love the way that, for me, it looks a little bit di different, right? It's like uh, a graduation, right? I live my life in the black. Like, there was no light. It was all dark. 
blackness and I lived my life in the black. Whether that meant I navigated through obstacles with substances or like for me, food was a good thing to like keep me in that like, oh, I could use food. Yeah. Food. I could use you know my body i could use a lot of things really have to be something sometimes just me feel something other than what i was feeling was sufficient Stop too much to get me out of that feeling that i was feeling i could do a lot, a lot of things i have graduated from black to gray um, for me now, though, it is about being an acceptance that, like, right, like, like for me, me, when I said yes, when I did, that I was going to be obedient. So, Steph, okay. um, we can hear you, um, but we're not catching all of you. It's going in and out. Are you on your phone? On my phone. It's the only device I have right now. But is anything else open on your phone? See that, Lindsay? Ruff, ruff. Okay. Oh, yes. There are 109 tabs open. Let's close... 10 of them really quickly. See if that makes a difference. <laughs> y'all, did y'all hear her say she got 109 tabs open? What Close them. laptop phone has she got going on? <laughs> what to do? You don't know how to close your tabs out? Um, though that Oh my god. <sighs> is the air on? Air is on somewhere. It's on in my house. I don't know if it's on in, in the car. All of a sudden we can't hear anything. That's the devil and he ain't worth a quarter. Let, would you tell him he's a liar again? Because he ain't worth a quarter. Shoot. Have us out here tripping and slipping and missing out on what God is trying to do. I think not. Do you he still hear the wind? Can you paint with all the colors of the wind? In the meantime, and in between time, don't you go nowhere while she is um, figuring her situation out. I'm going to close this vent. Maybe that'll make a difference in your wind sound. Amen. Maybe we won't hear it as tough. How about now? Do we still hear the wind? Tell me something, Piano. No, I ain't got no fan on. Oh, you know what? You possibly hear my laptop fan, but that's awkward if you do. Let's see. You still hear a fan, sugar? Still here, fan? Boo.
How, how, how is that? So right now, how am I, how we doing? Can you hear me? Down to check in. Tell us what's going I can't on. hear you. Oh, you still here? You can't, can't hear me. Um, can you hear me? Can anybody hear me? Can anybody hear me? No? I can't be heard? We choppy. You hear me? Okay, good. Bree hears me. Wonderful. Fantastic. Somebody hear me. I'm saying something. Lord have mercy. Oh. Lindsay, can you hear me? You can't hear me, but you can see my mouth moving. Y'all pardon us while we resolve our technical difficulties real quick, real quick, real quick. Now, Lindsay, yeah, Lindsay had to bounce out and she's coming back. So just give us a minute. We are going to get this together. I promise y'all this is the last Friday night that I am going to have to work. And we will be back rolling the way we are supposed to be prayerfully. Um, but... I was saying, though, that for me, um, a lot of times, a lot of times it's a struggle. It's a struggle for me because my problem is I, I, I don't do good with being vulnerable. That That's really my truth, right? Um, I know that when when we're in the gray it's important to be transparent and it's important to be honest about like where we are because i don't ever want to give the idea or the illusion that my life is perfect and that everything is going well um but since i have said yes right since i said yes god i will serve you i will be obedient i will do what you say i will walk in your will um right hands open whatever you have for me let me receive it and whatever you don't father god like take it from me the truth is i have had to experience a lot more gray and i believe it is because god is calling me to exercise a lot more faith right to have a lot more trust in him um but also i think that it has been very important that i um that I be honest about where I am, but not so that people can see me and be like, oh, she's going through something, right? But so that people can see me be victorious and walk through whatever it is, right? Um, you know, I've talked several times about losing my husband. I've talked several times about, you know, like going through the transition, losing a lot of weight. I've talked several times about, um, having a heart condition suddenly out of the blue about, you know, uh, having a pacemaker put in. I've talked several times about, you know, just like going through the transition of leaving LA and coming to Tennessee. Like there have been a lot of transitions and a lot of changes and all of those things I have been able to walk in faith through. However, it has been gray in those seasons, right? Like I have not yet arrived at a place in my life where I stand in the light, right? I do not always stand in the light. There are areas of my life where it is very filled with light, but I don't always stand, I don't always stand in the light. And I struggle sometimes with talking about my gray because I don't like to be judged in my weaknesses. I don't like to be judged in my frailties. I don't like to be judged in the areas that I have not yet been strengthened. But, um, you know, it's like when I go to the gym, right? Like as I'm lifting weights, it hurts. It doesn't feel good, right? And 
it's not this movement that is building the muscle it is your muscles break down in this movement right that's why it hurts because your muscles are breaking down and when you're resting that's when they rebuild themselves right and and so when i'm in the gray i believe that god is calling me to be more vocal about being in the gray and not so that you can see me and be like oh poor thing she's having a rough day so that you can see me and be like she is walking through it right and so i think that i am being called into more gray areas so that i can be more vocal about what i'm doing to get through those gray areas and when i'm stagnant and when i'm being reminded like no scripture no prayer no fast right like So it looks like um, we are we lost her. Um, she is currently not in the best uh, connection in terms of her location, um, but she's she's signing back on. So bear with us, folks. Can you hear me? Can you hear what I'm talking about? There we go. Here we go. Here we go. Here we go. We back. We back. We back. Uh, oh, we back. I, I've been talking this whole time. Was I not talking to nobody? You no. You were not talking to anybody. You were frozen. Um. So you're back now, though. And pretty much what where we left off was with you discussing how God. Um. You believe that you're entering into these gray areas so that God can can remind you of how to navigate through them, right? You're getting more gray to learn what to do when you're in the gray versus okay, uh, so you know, when you're... I was like, I can't backtrack over everything. I was talking for like 10 minutes. I don't know. <laughs> it, it's not well, we, I got no script. It ain't nothing on the paper, y'all. <laughs> right, right, right. Uh, since the secretary says that, that we can both be heard now, so praise God on that. Okay that we can both be heard now so um i was just saying you know like i feel like i am being i am being pushed uh -huh. in my strength right i am being broken down the muscles are being broken down so that they can be rebuild themselves and yes. and get more accustomed to using my tools right i get more accustomed to prayer i get more accustomed to fasting i get more accustomed to scripture i get more accustomed to reading i get more accustomed to writing right like i have this whole journal thing that i keep that's just like where i am and like that turmoil yeah. like oh i hate this feeling god and i don't want to talk about it and he's like i said speak and i'm like but i don't want to tell them because i'm gonna cry and i don't want them to see me cry because right, right i'm used to being game faced right? right like i want to be in this space where you see me and it's like this is who i am and you know nothing can phase me but so I just got a, I just got a question for my mind's curiosity. All okay. Right. When this ministry began, the idea was that we live out loud. Yes. Now, my question to you is personal question. Okay. At that moment, did you yeah. believe that there would not be an opportunity for the gray to show up and for us to have to live it out loud and navigate it and show it? You know, I didn't. I don't necessarily think that I thought about whether or not the gray would show up. Like I knew that things were gonna get rough. I knew that as soon as we said yes to this, that things were gonna get rough and choppy, but it never connected to me that like, you're gonna have to be vulnerable. You're gonna have to be transparent. You're gonna have to let them see your ugly cry. Like you're gonna have to talk about whatever this looks like, right? And so, I was, I was just, I was, before you asked that question, I was just going to tell you like, so, I mean, I have been who I am all my life, right? I have mm -hmm. known 
called on my life all my life. So although my children are not necessarily like uh, followers, right? Like they are very familiar with the word. They are very familiar with scripture. And, you know, my grandson, his name is Isaiah and his name is Isaiah very intentionally, right? Um, mm -hmm. His mother's um, birth tattoo for him is Isaiah 4110 because like that is where we live from, right? Like mm -hmm. do not, I am with you, right? Do not doubt, I am God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will hold your hand. Like I'm gonna walk you through it, but I need you to be transparent while I'm doing it. Like this is not about you. This is not about protecting your pride. This is not about protecting your ego. This is not about your namesake. This is about glorifying me. This is about giving me the glory. This is about honoring me. This is about talking about how I am building you, how I am strengthening yes. you, brought you from and where I'm taking you to. And I want you to talk about it. And, um, you know, this, the last couple of days have been really hard because I've been gray but in a very intimate area of my life, right? A very mm -hmm. private area of my life. Um, you know, not that it's a secret that my husband passed away, right? Not that it's a secret that I'm a widow, not that it's a secret that I'm single, but like the inner workings of what that looks like are very private for me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I feel like God has like, spit it out, open it out, say something, you know? And it's just like, ugh but I don't want to. What are they going to think? I don't care what they think. What did I say? You know? Right, and, right. And so, you know, for me, the gray area is really that, right? Like getting comfortable with like, okay, I'm not in the black. Thank you, God, for delivering me from the black. Because yeah. when black meets white, it's gray, right? Yeah. And it, spreads out, right? Like, I feel like I'm graduating closer to the lightness because I'm not in the black no more. Like, mm -hmm. I, that's great. It's not questionable. Like, no, that's great. That means there's light coming in. It's, it's right. Yeah. 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 Ooh, I, I got action now. Right. And that's exciting for me. You know, like I'm willing to navigate through the gray my challenge is how excited am I to do it out loud? You know, you and I are similar in the fact that I don't like to expose my feelings. I don't like to allow other people to see me in that space. And oftentimes it's because I fear that I'll be mishandled. When I'm vulnerable in that space, I, I have been mishandled when I attempt to be vulnerable. Um, and there's very few people in this, in this world that I trust with letting everything out to, um, because of the way that I have been mishandled and, and, and not that that was someone's intention to mishandle me. It was just that they're living their life and they're not necessarily concerned about what that looks like in response to what I'm trying to express, right? They're being who they are, who they know how to be but it's not necessarily uh, a personal thing against me. It's just that they don't know right. it's all they got. How, to, how to handle me. Right. So um, I, I have, I, I totally agree. Like th this is this ministry in and of itself is a challenge to be someone that we naturally would not be and to do something that we naturally would not do, but to show others that number one, the gray exists. You will hear a lot of people, um, a lot of religious people that challenge the idea of therapy, that challenge the idea of, of speaking out and getting help. And people will just tell you, well, pray about it and see what God says. And then that's as far as the resource goes. And the reality is that that is one of our very best weapons. Absolutely. Prayer is a big, wonderful weapon for us as we navigate this life with God but it's not the only thing that God has given us to get through the gray, right? And so I think that it's so important that we are in this space, willing to be as open and transparent as possible in regards to what we're experiencing. And, and not necessarily that it has to be, a, I went through A, B, and C, and then I did D, E, and F, and that's how I got to, you know, G, H, and I. Like, but the reality of, of, of expressing that, yes, right now I am hurting. 
and my pain it, it at this point is private but this is what i'm doing to navigate through the hurt this is what god gave me so when i when i get in my modes and lately my pain has not been so much um uh, pain in the sense of feeling maybe down and depressed but my pain has been more on the side of anxiety about things that i i cannot control which is nothing and I'm learning how to understand that I control nothing and God controls everything. And if I'm in alignment with God, then everything is under control. But for some reason, I feel like I have to have a hand in the matter as though, you know, my hand has done me some good in my life, even though it really never has. Um, so <laughs> it's all up in here in this noodle. I know that um, I yeah. can actively talk, speak to that now without getting any confusion about it. Um, and so for me, this is where I go to. I go to Philippians 4. Okay. And see. That is where I go. Um, oh, shut up, girl. I got a mark. <laughs> that's where I go. I, Don't I worry said. about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done. Then you will experience God's peace which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and minds as you live in Christ Jesus. If we were to go beyond that, and now dear brothers and sisters, one final thing, fix your thoughts on what is true and honorable and right, pure and lovely and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Keep putting into practice all that you learned and received from me everything you heard from me and saw me doing, then the God of peace will be with you. Um, that's like my go-to, right? And, and I think that one of the best things that we can do in this relationship building process is to find our go-to and, and, and hide that go-to in your heart because whatever's in your heart is what's gonna come running out when, when opposition comes, when the gray comes, when anything that comes to distract you from your path, right? Whatever's on the inside is what's going to pour out. So the more that you tuck scripture and the more that you tuck, you know, uh, uh, songs and, and psalms and hymns and those things in your heart, the more that's going to pour out of you when you're being tested and tried and, and challenged. Um, and so what my bit of advice would be to whoever's listening um, is to find that that piece of scripture that speaks to your your pieces, right? That speaks to your brokenness, that speaks to everything that you're afraid that you can't be in front of God. Find that piece of scripture and, and rehearse it, learn it, narrate it, write a story about it, a song, a, a something about it, so that when challenges come your way, that's what pours out of you. Because, you know, I've said this a million times from, from a number of different sermons, from different conversations, I got to be careful what I put in me because that's what's going to come out. So if I'm putting, you know what I'm saying, uh, West, Side. West Side Connection, you know what I'm saying? If I'm putting 213, if I'm putting, you know what I mean, all these different things, these different lyrics, these different words, attitudes, spirits. Yeah. If I'm putting all these different things within me, what's going to come out is a different kind of beast that I don't want to reintroduce to the world, right? I've already done that. I've already been that. I've already you know, uh, uh, knocked a few heads off. And I don't want to continue to do that in my life. I want to be who God is calling me to be. And so now I have to do things like walk around. And, and when I find myself being tested, I got to, Jesus is real. I know the Lord is real to me. Why? Because he's keeping me from being who I, who I naturally know how to be. Yeah. And I think that that's so important when you're in the gray is to be able to know that yes, I'm here, but these are my tools. These are my weapons. This is what I have to fight through and navigate that. This is my full armor, right? This is what I can go to when it's time for me to, to try to fight out of this space. And not every fight is one in which we get up and run and try to leave the territory. Sometimes the fight means that you stand and that you protect it. I'm just saying. You look think, like you're about to spill over, so spill. <laughs> I mean, everything that you're saying is so on point because, you know, um, 
in my gray space this season, right? Because I've had many and there's probably many more coming probably yes. over the next days. I foresee some more coming, but I think that it is so real what you said. Like it, it is, there's nothing more frustrating to me, right? Than when I'm talking to someone, right? And they're like, uh, they say something like, uh, well, you know, all you need is a little more Jesus. Yes, yes, I, I can never have too much of that. I also need to talk to my mental health specialist, though. I mean, right. like when, when I'm having heart issues, yes, I'm going to pray and I'm going to ask God for guidance and I'm going to ask God, God direct me. Pretty sure I'm going to be instructed, call your cardiologist, right? right? Like there right. are there are tools that 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 God has given us access to that are in this world because we live this world and our body, our flesh needs to be treated in, in this world, right? right? But being mindful of whose I am, right? I still have to minister to myself. I have to pray over myself. I have to speak life in myself. I have to, like, I have to be intentional with myself, but I cannot forsake my physical nature because I prayed. Well, I prayed to the Lord, you know, like he may, the Lord may give me a brand new heart. Like I may go mm -hmm. to the doctor, my next checkup, and they'd be like, well, what you doing with a pacemaker? Your heart is working just right. That may be, but I'm not going to go in the kitchen and get a butter knife and be like, the Lord spoke to me and said, take the pacemaker out. Like that. <laughs> You're not, not a butter knife. That is that is not the thing that I'm gonna do. And sometimes for me, it is so frustrating. And I was I was talking to Sister Secretary about that when when religious people question my relationship with God because I seek therapy. Mm -hmm. I had follow up appointment. You know what I mean? Like that is frustrating. Uh -huh. um, for me because I think that God gave us the intelligence. You know what I mean? Like I believe that God gave us intelligence and I am not gonna say that I am a follower of science, but I know that God created the ability to, for us to have science, for us to right. you know, be treated for our physical ailments, for our mental you know, defects, for, you know, whatever our isms are. I believe that God gave people the intellect. Like, I believe that we are all called to do something. We are all called to serve God's people. I don't think that we are all called in the same capacity, but I think that God has put knowledge and information and wisdom in all of us. It just manifests differently. And for some that is, you know, medicine and for some that is science and for some that is chemistry, you know, and, and, and for me, it is service, right? Like I have a heart to serve. Like that is what I have been called to do. I have been called to minister and serve God's people. And, um, my my song for the last three days is um you know i probably can't even call this man's name right now because it just fails me but i feel like it's something hampton but um it has been jesus i love you right Norman Hutchins? yes like uh, no matter no matter what it is right like jesus i love you jesus i love you i love you like jesus i love you i love you i love you i love you because yeah. that I have to stay because it's real easy for me to get angry and want to separate. Um, and so I have to be, I have to remind myself that like, no, like I love God. Like I love, I love the sacrifice that he made. I love the blood that was shed. Like I love you so much. Why? Because you're there, because you're you, because I didn't have to do anything for you to make all of the sacrifices that you made for me. And that yeah. really helps to minister, you know, to my spirit to remind me like, no, like I love Jesus. Just be like, if you think about, if you just think about the struggle, right? The yeah. gray, you know what I mean? The gray that Jesus <laughs> had gray days. It was, it was gray, y'all. 
I'm telling you, I can only imagine being uh, in Gethsemane, right? Being in the garden yeah. And, yeah. And, and like praying so hard that you are sweating blood because you are praying. Like, please remove this cup. Like, whoo, Father. Yeah. Like, I don't. Yeah. Like, this too much. This too much. Yeah. You know, like, whoo, do I really got to do? You know, it reminds <laughs> yeah, me. Of yeah, yeah, yeah. And you knew you was going to get a spanking. And so, when as soon as they got home, you just start crying. Like, I don't want to get a whooping. I don't want to get a You know, but we see how he transitions from the gray to the white because as soon as they come in to capture him, right? He gets humble and he becomes willing and it is very fluid and smooth. And he's like, all right, let's go. Right. And Peter, you know, it's always one in the group that want to be a G in front of all the homies. Right. He also the one, though, that was hiding in the crowd, that was denying Jesus, that didn't want to admit to anything. Right. But in front of the crowd. Right. Yeah. You know, like, he was a big, the big homie. Here, right now, yeah, and, and Jesus is like, Fool, you tripping? Why would you do that? Like, it yeah. puts his back and, like, Come on, y'all, let's go. Like, I'm about my father's business. Like, okay, this is what it is, this is what it is, right? And mm -hmm. I love that example because that's how I feel. Like, I got a little Peter in me, right? Like, I'm a G when right. the homies got back, you know, <laughs> ride for the cause, <laughs> right? But right? I'm not riding solo. As soon as things get sticky, I'm gonna be like, wait, hold up. Yeah. Yeah. They said, kill him, like, hang Jesus, like, hold up, like, you know what I mean? Like, right, 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 right. All, I think that we all have a little bit of Peter in us, right? Um, I think that we all have that place that, like, yeah, I'm down, but when it get gray, I don't know, man. Yeah. I don't know, man. And and so we have to remember that um that being a Christian comes with a fight. Uh if I can just read one more little thing, this is kind of a good yes. thing, but real quick, and I'm not gonna jump too deep into it. But uh first Peter chapter four, uh I'm gonna read from 12 to 19 just because it's all the same thing. But 14 is really what speaks to me the loudest. It says, Dear friends. Do not be survived at the fiery ordeal that has come on to test you. Though something strange were happening to you, but rejoice as much as you participate in the sufferings of Christ so that you may be overjoyed when his glory is revealed. If you are insulted because of the name of Christ, you are blessed for the spirit of glory and God rest on you. If you suffer, it should not be as a murderer or a thief or any other kind of criminal or even a meddler, right? Like, don't be messy. Like, that's not where the right, suffer. Right, meddling. Don't get caught up in the jibber jabber, right? Says, However, if you suffer as a Christian, don't be ashamed, but praise God. Praise him that I bear his name. Like, I am a disciple of Jesus Christ. I need to be able to say that out loud, right? It says, for it is time for judgment to begin within God's household. And if it begins with us, what will the outcome be for those who do not obey the gospel of God, right? He's telling yeah. us like, don't be a time, you're going to have to answer. And when the belt come out, is you going to be crying because you don't want this butt whooping? Or is you going to man up and you're going to be like, yep, I was wrong, Lord. Show me what I need to do right, right? Yeah, and yeah, yeah hard for the righteous to be saved what will become of the ungodly and the sinner so then to those who suffer according to god's will they should commit themselves to the faithful creator and continue to do good and all of that for me in a nutshell right it says that it don't matter what i say or what i do if i'm in the wrong mm -hmm. or if right? I need to make sure that I'm standing on God's word. And so when I get caught slipping, when I get caught being yeah. acting out, when I get caught fighting in the parking lot at Walmart, when I get caught... Walmart, Because they don't do those types of things at Target. I'm, I'm sorry. The, Go ahead. When, when, when I get caught having a conversation that's inappropriate with somebody that I shouldn't be having that conversation with, right? When I get mm -hmm. caught act, I need to be able to speak and say, I was wrong. Forgive me. 
What do I do to get it right? And I need to walk on that and I need to do it all victoriously knowing that yes, I'm gonna fall short, but I can't make an excuse. I can't say that because I'm not perfect, then it's okay for me to just go lay down. Right, right. Like I can't do that with like the Lord, no, I'm not perfect. So I'm gonna go on over here and get tooted and booted real. Like, no, like I may get caught in a place where I'm distracted and my mind was focused, but I need to speak that with my mouth and say, Lord, forgive me because I was not focused. I got distracted. That music got in my head, that conversation, it kind of distracted me because the enemy will come in with distractions, right? And he will create little spaces that just throw my focus off just enough so that before I know it, I'm laid up somewhere I'm not supposed to be laid up. I'm having a conversation somewhere I'm not supposed to conversate. I'm spending money that I don't got to spend, right? I'm eating stuff that I know is going to make me sick. And then I want to come in here and I want to say, oh, it's a great day. Oh, I'm having Mm -hmm. such a But Mm -hmm. it's not Mm -hmm. God, right? It's about me wanting to get the attention. And that, my friends, is where we want to stay out of. We want to stay out of the gray that is so that man can acknowledge us. We want to only acknowledge that we are in the gray because we are doing it and we are standing on God's word and we are walking in how he has called us to walk. And yes, it gets difficult. And yes, it gets challenging. And yes, I don't always get it right. But what is God's word telling me to do? And how do I that while I'm walking through the gray because I have graduated from the black and now I'm in the gray and thank you God that I am closer to the light and I'm closer to the glory and I'm closer to your goodness and I get to I know that I get to walk in your wheel today but how do I stand even when I fall short in the word I got to have those things tucked. The same way we used to have those little numbers tucked in the cut, you know what I mean? So so Boothang wouldn't find them like have them in the fifth pocket up here so it wouldn't be bad, right? I need to have a scripture right there, right? I need to have a scripture tucked right here, right? I need yeah. to have a scripture wrapped around my pen holding my hair up, right? So yeah. that no matter what I'm doing and no matter where I'm going, there's scripture and there's words to remind me what God's word says about where I am and how I'm supposed to conduct myself, how I'm yeah. supposed to walk. What should it look like? What should the example be that I'm setting right now? Because being a Christian does not mean that my life is going to be good. It doesn't mean that right. it's going to be easy. It means that I'm expected to participate in the difficulties in a certain manner and have a certain code of conduct about myself. That is how we navigate the gray. Yes. In decency and in order. Out loud. And I, I, and I, I just want to throw this out there. Oh, that's the girl. You just throw it. It is so important that you begin in prayer. Yes. Because we have to be careful about what we speak. And we have to be careful about who we speak to. And so we must begin in prayer because you will go and you will speak every fear in the ear of the enemy and he will then take that fear and he will use it to detour you from what god is trying to to propel you into yeah and so it all goes back to this right it all goes back to bible it all goes back to 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 following what it says here because the instructions are there And so we have to remember that we have to go to God in prayer and and we have to fine tune our ear to hear God speak. That happens when we spend time in prayer and meditation. That's when we're being fine tuned to hear him speak. And we have to be sure that we are remembering what God asked of us, which is, which is exactly what you just read and exactly what you just said, right? We can't get cute. Nope. We can't be too good. We can't be too fly. We can't drip too hard that nope. we are not walking in the light in which God has called us to walk into. And the light exposes. The light don't hide. Right. The light exposes. You know what I'm saying? Even, even, you know, I, I wear a good fat suit, girl. I call it a fat suit, you know, here and there. But there's even some days where that is exposed. If I wear the, the right white T-shirt and you can see, oh, well, her girl ain't girdling today. We can see that little back row. 
You know what I'm saying? Like it, it that's what the light does. It exposes. And so when we're called to walk in the light, we're called to be exposed so that God can work on us out loud. Wow. So that everyone might see who God is and what God has done. And not only are we called to be exposed, but we're called to sound off about who God is and who he has been. And that is exactly what we're doing here with you all tonight, right? We're sounding off and getting honest about the fact that, yes, gray exists. Yep. In it right now. Yep. Walking through it, navigating it. And this is how I'm doing it. So that when you get outside of gray, God will get the glory. That is the idea in this conversation, right? That is the idea in, in this ministry. That is the idea in who God is asking us to be, that we continue to navigate out loud so that he be glorified. Because it's really to no power of our own. I, I, I would dare to say that he get the glory while we in the gray. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I need to remember that like, yeah, this is dark and it's hard and I don't like it and Feel comfortable, but thank you, God, that I get to feel what I'm feeling today because I truly believe that every feeling and every experience that I have is for my testimony. Yeah. For the conversation that me and you gonna have on Saturday when we get in our mani pedis and our our, our right. presses and 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 whatever, right? Like that's not what it's for. It's it's for our testimony. Yeah. And being mindful that I want to make sure that I have come through before I start speaking to it. Because if I'm trying to speak to it while I'm in it, then I feel like I might have some confusion about it. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, when I say that, like, yeah, I'm in the gray. And right now, like I'm going through something and it's very private. It's not that it's a secret. It's just yeah. that I'm not on the other side yet. So yeah. like, I don't, my, I don't have my, my testimony ain't ready yet. So I don't want to yeah, yeah. say about it too soon. I, I want to, okay, yep. I'm in prayer. I'm in meditation. I, I, I'm fasting. I, I'm giving God the glory. I, I, I'm, I'm singing worship, right? Like I'm, I'm in my space. Yeah, but yeah, I yeah. Don't, I don't want to start talking about it until I get to the other side and God has opened my eyes to oh my god like look at what he did yeah like you know it's like I know a lot of women that have had children I've had, a, had one or two of them you know myself right and yeah one or and, two okay find out that we're pregnant right like we don't find out that we're pregnant the day we conceive like that's right. that's not right when we find out we're pregnant we share it with our partner but we don't make it public right yeah we we wait until we have endured that very very pivotal space because i don't know which direction god is gonna move in this right now right uh -huh. and and so when, when, when I know, when I see that like, oh my gosh, I got the sonogram, it's a little heartbeat, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, oh, look, it's a Peter. Oh my God, I wanted a Ruth, but it's a Peter. Thank you, God, for a Peter. You know what I mean? Like, then I can begin to bear witness to like, oh my gosh, y'all know we've been trying for this long and praise God. And I want to just share with y'all the goodness, you know what I mean? Because like then it's time for me to speak to what God has done in my life. But, yeah. but when you're speaking about what God is doing while he is doing it, sometimes you mess around and get to talking about the wrong thing and it'll go left when you thought it was going to go right. And then you're going to have to come back later on and be like, uh, y'all remember I, uh, I, uh, Sometimes you get to taking God's voice and talking like you doing something. You better let him do what he's going to do and then make sure you give him the glory. I'm just saying, I had to get that mm -hmm. out my bad. I'm so, <laughs> oh, so, so, you know, like I just like, it's all about us being candid, right? This is all about, yeah. you know, this is who we are. We are women that are Christians, you know, we walk in our ministry, we walk in our beliefs, you know, we are disciples of Christ. This is who we are, but we are going through very human things. Like we ain't yeah. got 
our life don't look no different from nobody else out there. You know, like uh, yeah. I got a T card. I wish I could get one. If y'all tell me how to get one real quick one time, like this, I'm just saying. Like you know, but our life ain't no different than anybody else is out there. Yeah. However, when we are going through our seasons, we will talk about like, woo, I'm going through some things right now. Yeah. It's yeah. Like get a secret or we don't want to give God the glory like I'm going to give God the glory in walking through it and talking about it and I'm not going to pull myself out you know because after I talked to you yesterday I was like maybe I shouldn't record for a couple of weeks like maybe I just need to sit in this girl space. bye you know I wanted to let that go down <laughs> you know, like I had that thought right like yeah. maybe need to just sit down and I just don't need to do you know and I had to I had to take that into prayer like yeah. I had to sit about 45 minutes last night in my room with my door closed and just like in the word and like okay God show me because I don't know so today when I shot you that message right you know like I didn't know because last night we didn't really talk about what we was gonna do yeah and yeah but we never really oh, talked about it. I was like uh so holla at me what we gonna do, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you was like, I think we need to talk about uh something the yeah. And you was like, and you was like, is it too soon? And that's why I was like, wait, what do you mean? Like, because yeah. like that was the conversation that I was having with God. Like, God, I'm in this space right now. Like, I just don't really know what I have to bring to the table. And and yeah. so like crazy to me, and I say this all the time, the way God is talking to you, but ministering to me, and like it is lining up, even though we're not talking about it with each other, it's just like that's what he do. That's I like what he that. Do. He be knowing. He do it like that, man. He be knowing. He I got a knowing. question for those that are listening. Get in the Come chat on. and let us know if you're in a gray space right now. Man. If you're in a gray space right now, just you ain't got to put your business all the way out there. But if you're in a gray space right now, just light the chat up. I'm just going to raise my own hand. I was wow. just gonna say, trying to get wow, it in the wow, chat. Wow, wow, wow. <laughs> I'm in the gray. <laughs> in the gray, baby. If you're in the gray, let us know in the chat. Uh, 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 Could be uh, just uh, us. And you know, we're going to skip through the gray together. How about that? Uh, <laughs> we're going to pray our way through the gray. We're going to yeah. see it. The gray, we're gonna read our way through the gray, we're gonna minister our way through the gray, we're gonna get through the gray, y'all. That's the only way out is to go through it. The only way out is to go through, but here's something else I know. Council would tell us you want to get comfortable with the gray <laughs> because when you see the light, you ain't here no more. Yeah, yeah. So it's, it's always gonna be something gray going on. Yeah, you know. Like the goal is to learn how to navigate the gray with Jesus. Yeah. You know, we, I was just going to say, <laughs> we, we, we don't want to see the light too soon. <laughs> so. Right. I got, I, you know, I like to quote a great philosopher that is Curtis Jackson. Um, and, the, and he said, he said, I got a lot of living to do before I die. And I ain't got time to waste. Now, that ain't in the Bible. But I feel like maybe we should put a footnote in the 2022 message version. Because, you know, that's the reality. It's true. It's true. Not the great philosopher, Curtis Jackson. Yes. 50 Cent, for those of you that don't know who <laughs> Curtis Jackson is. For those that are listening that don't know who the Curtis Jackson the is. But the man said he got a lot of living to do before he died and he ain't got time to waste. And that is so true. We have a whole lot of living to do. We've lived one type of life already. Yeah. And, you know, that that we made it out of that life to where we are now. And there is still a lot of living to do. But I got to live my life according to who God is calling me to be. And we are running out of time to do his work. I don't have time to play around shaking and faking and doing anything for anybody else. Unless it's me doing what God has asked of me. Like, I, I can't be trying to live my life to please X, Y, nor Z. If it ain't about God, I can't do it. That's right, because I'm not ever going to be able to please everybody anyways. Not all never. Trying to please ain't got no seat for me.
Just saying. Drop the mic. Mm, mm, mm. So for those of us that are in the gray, you know, we gonna pray about this gray. I too am a great philosopher. If you did not just hear my rhyme, I just busted. Uh, <laughs> but we are gonna go ahead and pray through this together. Um, and I, I challenge you to just really get specific in your prayer life about what that gray is and ask God to reveal what you're supposed to get out of the gray and, and see what happens when you get through it and see how you are prepared and ready to battle through the next gray area in your life. So let's let's pray through this gray. And we're going to give a double portion of prayer tonight. So I want to pray, uh, Steph, I almost called you, Paige. I want to pray. <laughs> and then I want you to jump in and pray right after that. I want those that are listening, as soon as we, you know, sign off to begin to pray as well, because more prayer is more power. And um, we're going to get through this prayer together. And, and we're going to see you on Friday again. Um, we missed you on Wednesday. I went up on Wednesday. I don't see nothing on Wednesday. You know I've been what? looking for it. I went up. I didn't see none of our previous ones either, but I went up. So we're going to get that Wednesday up going for y'all tonight. Okay. I'm going to commit myself to that tonight. And we're going to just have a, a, a double Friday night extravaganza. Uh, we're going to find it and get it up because it's there. We just can't see it. The public can't see it for some reason. So we're going to find it and get it popping. And then we coming back Wednesday again, uh, pre-recorded and then live again oh, on friday yay but let us pray mm. father god we come before you this evening humbly as we know how saying thank you thank you thank you for the great god thank you for allowing us to grow from who we were into who you are calling us to be and although we are not all the way there god we thank you for each step that we take in the right direction God, we thank you for the way that you are shaping us, that you are molding us. We thank you for every bit of trouble that you have allowed that is turning us into who you are calling us to be, God. We thank you for your will. For we know that it is your desire to prosper us, not to harm us, God, but to, to grow us, to give us everything that we need that we might be who you are calling us to be. We thank you, thank you, thank you, trust you, honor you, adore you, believe you. In every word that you have spoken, God, in every promise that you have made, God, right now, as we navigate this gray space, we just ask that you shine your light so that we might see your hand, so that we might see your heart, so that we might experience your peace and comfort in knowing that you are with us even in the gray, God, even in confusion, God, even in hurt, God, even in depression, even in anxieties, God, you are there and you are able to take those things and turn them around for our good. And may we use our good for your glory, God. We thank you. We trust you. We honor you. We believe you, God, and we stand on your word now knowing that you are changing us, that we might be who you are calling us to be for your glory's sake. We pray this prayer in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen, Father. Thank you, Father God, Lord, for everything that you are doing, Father. Father, we come to you right now, Lord Jesus, just seeking, Father, your guidance and your counsel, Lord. Because, Father, somebody out there, Lord Jesus, is dreading the gray, Father God. They have allowed the gray to consume them, Father God. They cannot find their way up from down, Lord God. Lord, and we just ask, Father, that you just send the angel, Father, that will minister to them, Father, to help them find their way, Lord Jesus, to understand, Father, that the gray is not meant to break us down, but only to make us stronger, Father God, that you may get the glory, Lord. Father God, somebody there, Lord Jesus, has turned from you, Lord Jesus. They have slid back into their nature, Father God, and they are trying to find their way out, Father. Lord Jesus, we pray for that person right now, Lord Jesus, yes. that they may find deliverance, Father God, that they may find comfort in your arms, Lord Jesus, that they may turn to you, Father, with a humble heart and say, forgive me, Father. Father God, we know that we are like, Lord Jesus, the sheep that has gotten lost, Lord Jesus. You come looking for us, Lord. Yes. 
You leave the hundred, Father God, to come and find us, Lord, because we are each special to you, Lord Jesus, and you have meaning and purpose for us, Father God. And Lord, we do not want to hide from you anymore, Lord Jesus. We want to come out of the darkness, Father God, and we want to walk pridefully, Lord Jesus, in our gray, Lord Jesus, letting our lives be a living testimony to what you had to deliver us through, Father what you are working with us through, Lord Jesus, what you are shaping us through, Father God, that every step that we take, Father God, may cast more light on your love and your glory and your kindness and your mercy, Father God. That we remember, Father God, that it is not about us, Lord, but it is all about you. It is all about the son that you gave, Father God. It is all about the blood that he shed, Father God. It is all about the three days that he laid silent, Father God, yes. only to reign again, Father God. And as we humbly await his return, Father God, we want to make sure that we are walking in the example that he has set, Father. We thank you, Father God, that we know whose we are. And that even when it does not look the way that we want it to look, that we stay silent and we stay willing to allow you to shape and mold us. And that we speak when the time is right so as not to distract or dissuade anybody from the path that you have called them to, Lord Jesus. And Father God, in our shortcomings, Lord Jesus, as we fall short of your glory and your goodness, Father God, Forgive us, Lord Jesus. Shine the light on the path that you would have us be on, Father God. Give us the strength to humble ourselves and turn from our wickedness, Lord Jesus, and to honor you in each step that we take, Father God. And Father, we will always remember to give you all the glory and all the honor and all the praise, Father. We thank you, Father, for all that you are doing and all that you have done. And we pray this prayer in the mighty name of your Son, Jesus Christ. We Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, we have also added a playlist to our YouTube channel. So there's some, some songs on there. And we'll continue to add more uh, on there for you all. But until we see you again, stay encouraged. Stay in your word. Keep planting and hiding the word of God in your hearts. Keep praying, meditating, fine tuning that ear. And we will see y'all. Yes. When we see y'all. And remember the way to navigate through the gray is to pray. Yeah. Oh, oh bars. Bars. Ah. Bars. See y'all. See y'all. See y'all.